praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I do believe it is time to begin our service this morning. Amen. God has been so good to us, so yes. good that he brought us here together this morning that we could be here in unity, in one accord, worshiping together the Lord Amen. Jesus Christ yes. in spirit and in truth. So with that, let's stand this morning and let's worship Thank our God you. Jesus. We come before you, Lord, and we just want to give you the glory and the honor that you deserve, Lord. You've been so wonderful to us, God. You kept us, Lord, and you brought us here this morning. And so we want to give you the praise, the honor, the glory that you deserve. You're a mighty God, a God who is mighty to save, Lord. You gave your life for us, Jesus. And it's not a story that gets old, God. It's not something that we get tired of thinking about. It's something that's fresh. It's new every day, Lord. Your mercy and your grace and your 
one of those mornings where everything's moving at 110 miles an hour and, and sometimes you feel like you missed something and you got to go back and uh, pick up one shoe and then you realize that the other shoe's not tied and well, by the time you get it all put together, praise God, we made it to church, all right? We're here. We're here. That's what matters. We made it. Praise Jesus. All right. Thank you, Lord. And so we're thankful for that. And... Um, just, just glad to see what God is doing here in uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and all the, all the folks that are turning and giving their heart to Jesus. That's what it's all about. Praise the Lord. So at this time, we'll give everyone an opportunity to give. I'd like to ask Brother Baker, sir, if you come Amen. up here, please, and uh, we'll receive up the, the offering this morning. And all the giving, as we know, it, it goes to me to you here. We've already said it before. And then anybody joining us online, there's a link on the Facebook page where we live stream. And you can click on it and um, donate online. Also, for folks that are here, sometimes we don't always bring cash. I don't always have cash on me. Well, those cards back there, you scan it, the QR code, it'll take you to the website. And you can uh, give online that way as well. And so we thank you for your giving. And most of all, God bless you for your giving. Sir, if you please pray for the gift and the giving. Father, thank you for this time you've given us and this come to your house this morning. Bless the gifts and giving. Just came and pray, amen.
cometh unto the Father but by him. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And this morning, we just get right down to the Word of God. I'd like to direct your attention to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Allow me to go bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And I'd like to take my text from another portion of scripture. Hebrews chapter 6. For men barely swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation to them is an end of all strife, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. God confirmed it by an oath. So this morning I want to preach to you on a message entitled, An Oath to God. An Oath to God. Reverend, if you would please pray, sir. Let me show you love and all that you do for us every day. We thank you for this time that you afforded us to come here in your house to receive your goodness, your, your light, Lord God, your direction, to your word. I ask that you would bless each one, accomplish your will, bless pastor as he ministers to us your word. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In your life, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My wife and I were just talking this week and really, the, this message was inspired to me by the story that she told me about this woman that we know. And it was very inspiring to me. And I didn't, I didn't know that, again, this lady, I'm, I'm not going to mention who it is for her sake, but it's somebody that we know. And they're not, they're not here, so you don't have to, who is it? Who is it? There's nobody <laughs> here. Right? But she told us, she told my wife basically her testimony, and it was very inspirational to me. And I was praying and thinking about it, and I really felt like God laid this on my heart because it was so inspirational for what this woman went through. And so she wasn't serving God at the time, but she had two kids. She had two kids, one from one man, one from another man, and then she ended up getting married, and she got married to someone who was a decent guy, right? He was, she seemed like somebody who was going to be decent. So she got married, and then they moved together, and she was following this man and everything, and they were just living their life and everything seemingly was going by, you know, kind of normal, kind of fine. And things kind of took a little bit of a downturn for her. At one point, he actually hit her. This man hit her, and I mean, that's not really a good man at all, right? Couldn't hit anybody for any reason. But this man, he hit her, and so they went back and forth, and she just let him know. She said, don't, you know, don't hit me again, or I'll kill you. I mean, really, she, told, she let him know, like, do not, Put your hands on, you know, and they stayed together. But then one day, one of our churches, like we go around knocking on doors, somebody knocked on her door. She wasn't going to answer, but actually, it was her husband. He told her, he said, "You should answer it. Just see what it is, right?" So she answered it, and you know, the people they worked with her, they followed up on her, and she ended up coming out to one of our churches. This is in another state, and she started going to church. She started getting in. And she'd bring her kids with her. And the man, he wasn't really interested in her husband, but she started getting into church, right? And well, he 
started having a problem with it. And the issue was, she remembers one day in service, the preacher was preaching about this same type of thing, making an oath to God. And she'd been kind of going back and forth and all these things, and she made an oath to God that she was gonna stop smoking marijuana. Because to them, it was just a normal thing. Every morning, they would wake up, and they'd smoke a joint, and then, you know, the husband would go off to work, she'd take the kids to school, and it's just, that's just how they lived. They just didn't know any better, all right? That's just how they lived. Nobody, they, you know, that's just how they were, all right? But she started going to church. God started dealing with her heart, and so she made an oath. She's not going back to smoking marijuana. You know, she's going to have a real change in her life. And so God really began to work in her life where she began to have a lot of changes in her life. And then the husband, he pretty much, uh, one day he came at her like he was going to hit her, but he didn't. And I believe that really God stopped him from doing that. And so she left that day to go do laundry. And then God spoke to her heart. He said something major is going to happen. And when she came back, he told her, he said, you know, you're either going to have to follow me or choose the church. It's between me or the church. And she said, well, I'm going to keep serving God. I'm going to keep going to church. And so he took all their stuff and he put it outside and then that's it. They parted their ways. And she ended up having to pretty much start over and um, God helped her and the pastor of the church, he let her know these are grounds for divorce because it's abandonment. Abandonment. He abandoned her. Right? And so she moved on and she kept serving God and her testimony continues on where God in miraculous ways all a really lengthy story but God really helped her with everything that she went through and you know if you met her now you probably think there's no way that you could add it up and think this is what she was because she ended up getting married she ended up having more children she ended up being a pastor's wife and she's still serving God today but it was that testimony of making an oath to God making a promise to God that it just it touched my heart and as I was praying Thinking of what to preach about, God laid this message on my heart about making an oath, which is a promise to God. And making an oath to God and doing all we can to keep it. Making a promise to God and doing everything we can to keep that promise. See, a promise must be unconditional. You say, what's a conditional promise? It's to say that, well, if this then that, okay? God, if you do this for me, then I'll serve you. That, that's not how it's got to be. God, if I promise you, Lord, I promise you, if you just work this out, then I'll give my life to you. Then I'll surrender everything. Then I'll do it all the right way. I'll start doing things the right way if you only do this one thing for me, God. But that's not the right way to approach God. You see, I remember even my own self, I was sitting in the back of a police car at one point. And I was, I was arrested, and I'm sitting in the back of the cop car, and I'm, I began to pray to God. And I never prayed to God. I never, you know, no. That wasn't me at the time. I wasn't saved. But I prayed to God because I'm in trouble, right? I'm in trouble, and I'm thinking, God, I need your help, Lord. If you just get me out of this, Lord, just, just let me, I don't know, just take these handcuffs off. Let me run away or something, or just let me get out of this whole thing. And I promise you, God, I'll serve you after this, Lord. I promise, right? I, I was praying this. In my mind, and I'm thinking, like, oh, my goodness, like, I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm over and done with it. Well, what happened? I still got in trouble. It was a little bit of a slap on the wrist. <laughs> it could have been worse. Really, it could have been a lot worse. But I didn't go serving God, you know? <laughs> and that's how it is for most people, right? They, they put these stipulations on God. They say, God, I promise you, Lord, I promise God, if you do this for me, I'll stop doing this. I'll stop doing that. If you do this for me, God, I'll stop drinking. If you do this for me, God, I'll stop going to the bars. Lord, if you do this for me, God, I'll fix my life. I'll put it all back together, God. I promise I won't do the wrong things. Just do this for me, God. But that's not the way to come to God. It has to be unconditional. There's no conditions that you have to put in front of God. What you should say is, God, even if you slay me, I'll still serve you like the prophet, the, the man Job. He says, but I will maintain mine own eyes before him. He also shall be my salvation. Though he slay me, 
I will trust the Lord. I will continue to trust the Lord. There's no stipulation. And there's always going to be a hypocrite out there to criticize someone to say, well, see, you started serving God, but things aren't really working out for you the way that they were supposed to. Come you on. started going to church, yeah. but things aren't really adding up for you in your life. Well, you know what? Just be like Job again. Then said he to his wife, no, then said his wife unto him, dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Job's own wife, she mm. said, curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. That's what he told you. He said, You're speaking like a foolish woman. Don't tell me to curse my God. Right. There's always going to be a hypocrite out there to tell you, You went to serve God headlong. You gave your life to him unconditionally. But look at all the problems that you still have in your life. Look at where you're at still. You know what? You're speaking one of the like one of the foolish people. I'm not going to serve God by putting a condition on God to say, Lord, if this, then that. No, I'm just going to serve God because I want to serve God. Yes. That's how it has to be. And it's not hard. There's no needs to put any conditions on God. There's really no need because God already gave us all the promises. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently Seek him. Those that diligently seek him, he rewards them. You got to have faith first. You got to first believe in God. You got to come to God and believe that he is. There's no need to put a stipulation on God and say, Lord, if you do this for me, then I'll serve you. He said, all you got to do is have faith. Believe that God is. Put your faith in God first and then diligently seek him and then after we come to God, after you give your life to Jesus, after you repent of all your sins, after you've given everything over to the Lord, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It may not be what we have in our minds. It may not be the way that we add things up in our mind. We always want to plan things out, right? We have a grand plan for the future. I remember planning out how me and my wife were going to get married and all these things, and we ended up not seeing each other for over a year. Over a year, I didn't see her face to face because I was in, J in Japan as an associate pastor and she was still in Bible school in Washington State. And it was hard and things didn't go out the way that we planned. But you know what? That's okay. Because you seek God and then he will he'll bless you. He'll bless you. That's the way that it goes. And there's no reason, again, to put a stipulation on God because the promises of God, the promises of God are in Christ and they are yea and amen if you call upon him he will save you if you serve him he will bless you when you open up your heart to him he said i will come into you and i will make my abode within you god will be in you when you open up your heart to the lord god will be in you those are the promises of god and there's many more he's given us all these promises the promise of eternal life alone the promise of being saved from going to hell alone should be worth it to say, God, I don't want to put any kind of stipulation on you, Lord. I'm just going to serve you, God. I'm going to live by faith. I may not know what tomorrow has for me, but God, I know that right now I need you and I'm giving my heart to you and there's no conditions that you have to meet for me, God, because you've already met them, Lord. You've already given your life. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, who died for me yes. on the cross. He shed his blood for me on the cross. There's no reason, God, for me to put any kind of stipulation on you. Anything to say that, God, you have to do this first before I give my life to you, Lord. I should serve God all the way from the front. Nothing being held back. There's nothing. God's already done it all. He's already done it. Look, the truth is right here. Yes. God's word, the truth is right here. Why would God, listen, the word of God, it's written. It's been translated in all these different languages. And God gave it to men, and men wrote it as they were inspired by the Holy Ghost. And God didn't give us his word so that it could only be interpreted by a few. No, it's for everybody. The word of yes. God is for everybody. Why would a holy and just God give us his word in order for us to be confused by it? It's not hard. All you got to do is read it. His promises are in there. What he wants you, what he wants for you and from you and what he has for you, it's all in here. It's all in here. But making a vow to God, a vow, it's a solemn promise. It's a, it's a serious, great.
brave promise to God. That's what a vow means. It means it's like a holy, there's a religious element to saying the word vow. It's something that's holy. It's something that's sacred. It's to say I'm making a vow to God. There's many people in the word of God, they make vows, they make promises to the Lord. And God, he remembers. God does not forget. He remembers when somebody makes a vow to God. He, rem he does not forget. God remembers. Jacob made a vow to the Lord. He was traveling. He was going out. He left his household. And then he had an interaction with God, so he made a promise to God. And then years later, years later, he was at the same location. And God said, I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Arise, get thee out from this land, and return to the land of thy kindred. God remembered. He said, God said, I remember that vow that you made to me, Jacob. I remember. I remember when I touched your heart and you said, God, I'm going to serve you. God had a real interaction with this man, and he made a vow to God. He said, God, I'm making you a vow right now that I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to live for you, God. I'm dedicating my life to you, God. And then later on, God reminded him of this vow, and he said, you're on a journey right now, Jacob, and you're going the right way. This is the way that you need to go. Keep that vow. Keep it with all diligence, because I have not forgotten. God does not forget. And so with that, when somebody makes a promise to God or somebody makes a vow to God, they should do all they can to keep it with all their heart. Everything, it's a serious thing. It's, they say a man is only as good as his own word, right? Man or woman, right? You know, even the Bible says you even know a child by the way they behave. You know the way that they are, right? So you know a person by the things that they say, the things that they promise, right? They promise to do this and they come short. And then people lose trust in them and all these things. Well, if God gives us a promise, he's never going to come short. Right. But if we make a promise, it's up to us to keep that promise to God. If you're going to follow God, it has to be God's way. See, you could say, well, preacher, I know I want it to be God's way, but I have some plans, right? I have this plan, I have that plan, I have all these things. But it comes down, this is what it comes down to. Is it okay with God? And how do you know if it's okay with God? You look at his word. Is it okay with God? Is what I'm doing, number one, is it sinful? If it's sin, it's got to go. It has to go. It has to leave now. There's no reason for it to stay around in my life. Uh, there's no reason. God, I want to do things your way. I don't want to do things my way. If you look back at life, I can look back at my life and I can say, you know what, Lord? The way that I did things that was my way, there's, Lord, I don't ever want to go back to that. There's no reason to. I'm, I got tired of doing things my way. I got tired of uh, listening to my own heart and listening to, to the things that were coming out of my own mind. No, that's why God gave us his word, to keep yes. us straight, yes. to keep us straight, to keep us on the straight and narrow path. It takes a little bit of work. It takes opening up the Bible. It takes coming to church. It takes prayer. It takes all these things to keep ourselves in line with the will of God. That's what it takes. But we got to do things God's way, not our way. Our ways lead us astray. You, if all you can, you know, all you have to do is look at, look at the people that never met God. Look at cultures where they encountered missionaries. In Wado, even in Papua New Guinea, I'm trying to think of the man, I can't think of his name right now, but it comes to my mind, well, but he wrote two books. He was a missionary to Papua New Guinea. But one of the things that, he, that stood out to me, I remember reading it, he said, when he looked in the eyes of the people, it's just like they had a haze over their eyes. They just looked like they, they had no learning in their eyes. They had no, no, I'm not saying they were, you know, not smart, but what I mean is they had no knowledge of God, and you could just see it in their eyes. Mm. You could see it in their eyes. It wasn't there. And then you look at the places where God has been preached. You look at cultures 
where Christianity has had revivals then. You look at the differences of, of how over generations, progressively, that culture or that, that country gets better and better and better and better. And you look at the ones that are without God and how they, it just seems like nothing's there. Nothing's there, you know? It just looks bad. It looks ill. It looks like there's no progression. And so it is with God. We got to do things God's way. When you do things God's way, he blesses. He blesses. There has to come to a point where it's a made-up mind. And I want to go back here a little bit. In Matthew, there were these that made vows. There were these religious folks. And I preach about them a lot. And the reason why I preach about these folks a lot is because if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're all over there. They're, we know them, right? The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious elites, they're all over. And so this is what Jesus had to say unto them. He said, Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold in the temple, he is a debtor. All these man-made junk. They'd say, if you make an oath to God, right? If you people say, I swear to God, you shouldn't do that. Don't make a promise to a man by saying, I swear to God. That's not right. That's not right. But he's saying here that they would say, I swear by the temple. And then the religious elites would say, that's not right. You need to swear by the gold in the temple. Swear by the gold in the temple, and then you are a debtor to the temple. So come on up here. Come on up to the temple and swear by the gold and put the money in the bag, and now you will have the promises of God. That's essentially what it was. They said, swear by the gold in the temple. He said, ye fools, for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gift that is upon the altar, he's guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth, Gift. Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven sweareth by the throne of God and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe and mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave out the other undone. There's no, re there's no need to, to start swearing by God, swearing by the word of God, swearing by, there's no need for that. Let your yea be yea and your nay be yea. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. He said in James, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. There's no need to do that. Just, just say, just speak truth. Just speak the truth. There's no reason to swear to God. There's no reason to do all these things. But that's where... Making a vow to God is a different thing. We're not. I'm not talking about you, you, you swear to God and then you say you're, you're telling somebody else, right? That's where, in Hebrews, he said that's where the strife has ceased. Page one. I lost it. He said, "For men verily by swear by the greater, which is by God, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife." So meaning somebody gets into an argument or somebody gets into something and they say, well, I swear by the greater, which is God. I swear to God, this is what I'm going to do. And that's supposed to end all the strife. That's supposed to, okay, well, they said they swear to God, so that means that's going to end it all, right? That means that the strife is ended. That means that what they said is true. It's final. But that's not how it ought to be. The only time that we need to swear to God the only time that we need to make an oath to God is when you're making it 
to God. That's the point. The only time that you have to say, Lord, I'm making you an oath, is when you're making it to God. There's no reason to bring, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And just be a man or a woman of your word. And so it is. How about it when we just make up our mind and we give our life to God? When we make up our mind, we say, Lord, I'm never going back. I have a made up mind. God, I'm never going back. And to the another said also, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having his put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Your heart has to be all in. it. Your heart has to be all in it. When God says, follow me, and you answer and you say, Lord, I'll follow you, your heart has to be all in it. There's no looking back. There's no thinking about, well, look at all the fun that I used to have back when I was in the world. That's not right. That's not from God. There's no looking back to say, I miss what I had when I was out there in the world and I was running around. There's no looking back to that. If you got to make up your mind and say, I'm never going back. He said, no man putting his hand to the plow. Right, you got the ox in the front, and you're tilling the ground, and you, you're looking back and say, "Look at what I missed out on." He said, "You're not fit for the kingdom of God." Mm. He said, "You gotta be all in. Put your heart yes. into it. Put your heart into it. Make that oath as unto the Lord, and say, God, I'm never going back to the way that I yes. used to be. Yes. Lord, I have a made-up mind. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creation. Yes. I have a new mind. I have a new heart. There's no reason to go back and lust." Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. The way of the transgressor is hard. What is there to look back to? People that are living in sin, people that are living in the world, their way is hard. The Word of God tells us the way of the transgressor is hard. It's difficult. It's difficult. It's much better to be with God. I'd rather be on God's side. I'd rather be on the Lord's side and say, God, you're with me. You got me. I got this. I don't want to be like the dog going back to his vomit. It tells us in Proverbs, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Why would I want to go back to that? There's nothing, nothing, Lord. There's nothing that the devil could hang out there in front of me. There's no carrot. There's no prize. There's no piñata. There's nothing that I'd say, Lord, That's I'm forsaking everything. I'm going back to that. No, nothing. Paul wrote to the Galatians and he said, But now after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God, turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Why would you want to go back to the weak things, to the beggarly things? That means the things that were poor. They had nothing, they had no substance to them. Why would you want to go back to that and be in bondage? in bondage to sin. There's no reason to go back to that. Jesus set me free. I used to be shackled by sin. I used to have my hands tied up, my mood, all this stuff. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I have a made up mind and I'm free in yes, the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. They are the ones that are bound by Satan. They think that they're being an individual. They think that they're being different. They think that they're being creative or outspoken or outstanding, whatever it may be. But in reality, they're just like everybody else. They're just copycatting everything that's out there in the world. The Bible says there is no new thing under the sun. God has already seen it all. We've just been going over in the, in the study of Genesis about the Tower of Babel. How they said, let us come together, right? Let us make a name for ourselves. Go to, let us make brick and burn it thoroughly. Go to, let us build a tower that we may reach the heaven, right? Let us all come together. Let's all do it together. In the meanwhile, they had a tyrant serving over them, their king, Nimrod, oppressing them, a hunter of men. What did it get them? The destruction of the Tower of Babel and them being spread abroad. God said, I'm not going to have it that way. So it is now. We can come to the instruments. We're getting ready to close. We're almost done. I want to...
go through this one more time. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I'll follow thee wherever thou goest, God, wherever you go. Speaking of the place, God, wherever you go, I'll, I'll go. Jesus let him know, you may not always have a place to stay. If you follow me, it doesn't matter where we're at. We can follow God anywhere that we are. He said unto another, follow me. But he said, suffer me first to go bury my father. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. But go preach thou the kingdom of God. You can't let family get in the way. There's nothing that can get in the way. And it may seem harsh what he's saying here, but really their burials took over a year anyway. Let the dead bury the dead. Don't let the family hold you back. And another said, Lord, I'll follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. There's nothing going back. As we bow our heads and as we close our eyes, I want to consider, I want everybody to consider one thing here at this time. That all these people, they have the opportunity to follow God. This was their time. This was their time to say, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. There's nothing that's going to hold me back, God. I'm, I'm going all in after you. And so this morning, I want to challenge everybody that is in here to make an oath to God, to make a promise to the Lord, to say, God, I'm going to follow you, whatever it costs, God. There's no price that is too high, Jesus. There's nothing that is too much. I'm here to make up my mind, Lord, and to say, God, I'm following you. He said, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the word of God. That's the promise that God has made us. He has more promises than that. But this morning we have the time and opportunity right now to say, Lord, I'm committing my life unto you, God. Wherever you're at, maybe you don't know Jesus is Lord and Savior. Right now is your time. Maybe there's something that you're struggling in your life. You need to make that oath to God. You need to make that commitment this morning to say, God, I'm never going this is the time in my life, Lord. I'm not letting this opportunity pass me by, Lord. This, God, right now is the time I'm ready to make that oath to you, God. Nobody else. I'm not here. Lord, I'm not here to promise anything to anybody else but you, Lord. I'm here to make an oath to you, God. And I'm never, I'm never going back to that same way. Right now is that time. And I want to ask you this morning to come up here and pray. Let's pray together. The altar is open. I encourage each one to come and pray and seek the Lord this morning. This is a special time of prayer. This is a special time of making a commitment to God, of making that oath to the Lord to say, God, I'm never going back. God, I'm never going back. Lord, this is my commitment to you, Lord. This is my oath to God. It's not between you and anybody else. It's only between you and Jesus. Jesus is tugging at your heart right now. He's got his hand reached out to you right now. He's holding you right now. He's saying, come to me, child, right now in the name of Jesus. Come to me, child, and give me that promise. Give me that oath. Give me your word. Tell me that you'll follow me. Tell me that you'll never go back to the way that you used to be. Give me that promise right now in the name of Jesus. You can do that right now. Claim it, believe it, and make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm never going back. As she sings right now, let's pray and let's make our commitments to God this morning.